So for those of you who suffer with imposter syndrome, or for those of you who are interested in the topic because you work with people on this, I want to talk about the importance of role models and then also the concept of role playing because these are key in the issue of imposter syndrome and I think might help you think about the issue in a slightly different way. So let's start first by talking about the issue of roles. We all have many roles in our lives, right? So I am a mom and now I am also a grandma, I have one grandchild. And I'm a YouTuber, I'm a coach, I'm a spouse, I'm a friend, I'm a daughter, right? My parents are still alive. So I have many roles and I act differently depending upon what role I'm in, right? The way that I would converse with a friend over dinner is different than the role I play when I am being a coach. All of this is very normal, it's natural. And often we don't even really think about it. It just kind of flows. It just kind of is obvious, right? But then there are times where we take on a new role. So let's say you're a new parent. That's a new role for you. You've never done it before. You might feel really insecure. You might have to practice it. And if you think about it, like the concept of being a parent, children role play this, right? Like children will imitate their parents and then they will role play being mom or dad or grandma or somebody who goes to work, they might go into their parents' closet and pick out a pair of work shoes and a work outfit and like dress up, right? So kids learn to dress up and role play to practice different roles. It's sort of a issue of playing. And then when we grow up, we kind of do the same thing. So when we take on a new role, we might feel a little bit like we're role playing, like that can tie to this feeling of being an imposter, like this isn't really me, like because you have to get used to that role. Now, if the role you're taking on is one that is a bit different than your culture or your society says you should have, or you have grown up with in your own family, it might feel like even more of a stretch to be in that role. So if you've never had a role model for what you're doing, imposter syndrome may come more easily to you. And this is also a reason why it's so important that our media present a variety of people in various ethnic groups and genders in non-stereotypical roles, right? Because the media images we see also impact our sense of self, our sense of possibility for ourselves, and that sense of comfort with a particular role. So I'll use an example from my personal life. I went to Wall Street in 1982, and initially I had kind of a low-level position, so it was not that strange to be a woman, to be honest. But then I went back to business school, and when I came back to Wall Street in 1986, I was in a definite minority as a female. Now, business school was probably about a third women at the time, but in terms of the people who went into finance, much lower. And then I entered a field called mergers and acquisitions, and it was even lower. So I had almost no role models on the job. And then in my family, there were no women who had done this type of male-dominated industry profession. So I didn't have any personal role models. And if you guys remember pictures from the 80s, like we used to wear shoulder pads. So I would have like these business suits that have skirts, but then the jackets would have these shoulder pads. I even had a few of those shirts that have that like fake tie. And yeah, did I feel like I was dressing up in the morning to play a role? I did. And in many ways I was because there was almost like a uniform that I had to wear to fit in, to fit the role. So it took me extra time to feel comfortable in that role as opposed to somebody, you know, some of my cohort, the people my level who joined the same year I did, they had parents, usually dads, who were in the field. They had a model their whole life and they looked like the majority of the people there. So there is research that imposter syndrome is higher among minorities and women in non-traditional fields. And I think this is one of the big reasons. So when I was on Wall Street, I at some point had to realize like, yeah, okay, I'm dressing up. (laughs) This isn't like the real me. I had to fit my personality into a pretty narrow range to succeed. I figured that out pretty quickly when I was on Wall Street. 
I could not let my full self shine through, or at least that's how I felt at the time. And I definitely felt that sense of imposter syndrome for a while, although I was able to navigate that space and really look at my contributions and abilities versus those people who looked more the part. And I really was able to take in that I was as competent as anybody with some time. I'm saying with some time, I was able to do that, counter that sense of imposter syndrome, like I don't really belong here. Although I did feel like I didn't really belong there, but it became more about whether I belong there, like, is this really what I want to be doing? Is this really who I am? And not about, I can't do this or I'm faking it to succeed. So I'm hoping that makes sense to you because we do sometimes role play. Like we do sometimes have to take on the external outfit or persona that goes with the profession we're in right? If you're a doctor, there's a persona that goes with a doctor and you might have some doubt sometimes, but you'll have to navigate that space of what you can share and what you can't share. But it doesn't mean you're incompetent in your job. So learning that it's okay to be role-playing for a purpose, right? Without it impacting your sense of self or competence or self-esteem. And then if you are in a profession or entering a profession, which is different than the role models in your life, just know this might be a little bit harder for you. Just bring that to the surface like, wow, I'm doing this kind of work and nobody in my family has ever done this, right? Or if you're from a family that's recent immigrants to a different country, you might be performing in a way that's very different than your other family members. So acknowledging that as something that's impacted you and will or might make this role a little bit less comfortable for you at first, but don't let it go to your internal sense of competence. Role models are super important. They really are role models within our family, within our society, in our schools, in our media. And the more we can do to reduce discrimination, reduce stereotypes, right, societally, the more we do on that, the more people will be able to achieve what they truly can achieve and be who they truly are. And we will all benefit. So let me know what you think about this connection between role models, role playing, and imposter syndrome. If you haven't seen my video on the seven signs that you have imposter syndrome and the few signs that you don't actually have it, take a look at that. I can put it right here and I'll also be coming out shortly if I haven't already released it. I don't always know the order I'm going to release things in, but um, on recovering from imposter syndrome because I truly want your light to shine brightly in this world. See you later. <laughs>